Hello everyone. Uh, so we are talking about system response and that is a part of chapter 3 of the reference book. Uh, let me make it bigger. So here we have two categories uh, that we can um, separate uh, the response of any particular system into. One category is called a steady state response that is kind of uh, a permanent response that we get out of a system and uh, it remains for a long time. Transient response is another category, um, category number two. And this is kind of a short-term response or temporary response that we can expect from a system. So we have one example here. So if we imagine that we have a spring with a uh, constant of k, and uh, as you can see on the on this picture, so the spring is attached to a surface, for example, ceiling or object that is not moving. So while the spring is standing on its own and there is no weight or mass attached to it and we are not manually pulling it or stretching it or compressing it so it has um, some standard um, length and the position of the tip of it it would be on uh, on a point on a position point for example we can call that zero or we can define that as um, one initial value, for example, we can say that is 5, and that 5 would define it um, where it is um, in respect to the ground or in respect to the ceiling. Once we attach a weight object that has weight, and we know that is called mass, so once we add that mass to this system, the spring starts to um, accelerate starts to bounce um, so it will be stretched out first because the weight will pull it down and then um, um, the nature of the spring is going to fight with that and pulls it back up so it is going to have uh, a temporary uh, change in the position of the tip and the length of the spring so it's going to oscillate sorry for my english it's going to oscillate so that oscillation can be um, can be analyzed. We can look at that. If we have, for example, a pen attached to the end of that spring, and there is a roll of paper moving on the back of this spring, and um, over the time we can see that the marker is marking the position of the tip of the spring, and it's going up and down, up and down. As um, I'm sure you can imagine, that uh, gradually that oscillation uh, will become less and less until it settles down and we have a point, a position that is uh, going to remain unless we have some extra force manually added pulling it or uh, compressing it then the story will be different. So for this particular example, if we want to uh, look at which one is the transient response and which one is the, um, the permanent or steady state response. So if we look at, sorry for this error. So if we look at that plot again, we start from uh, some initial value. So that would be the spring that has no weight added. So that, that uh, will highlight that point. Then it's going down, up, down, up, and so on. And then at some stage, it's going to have that permanent um, position or the length of the uh, spring, if you're looking at the length. So the part that is uh, going to have the permanent or remaining response, that part is called the steady state. And that value, if you're looking at displacement, that value is going to have uh, the name is steady state value. And while that transient uh, stage is um, happening, uh, that, um, that change is happening, we call that transient response. So uh, from the beginning up to that settling down point, that is a transient response. And once it is settled down, we have a steady state response. 
I hope it is clear, but uh, if you have any question or concern, let me know. So this example is very good example of um, uh, dividing or separating the response into uh, the transient and uh, steady state. In some uh, examples, uh, we know that uh, it doesn't really matter uh, how long or how changing um, the variable of change um, is happening in our transient. All we care is that our steady state value is our desired value or it's going to get to that point that is our desired point uh, gradually. All we care is that end point. But for some systems, it is very important to also analyze that transient and temporary stage because that change matters. For example, if you're looking at some electrical circuits, that sharp change might actually burn our capacitor or might burn our inductor or might affect some other components in our system. Or if I'm looking at some oscillation, mechanical oscillation, um, if I have very high um, range of change, my spring might, for example, get out of uh, that normal, usual um, uh, movement. So it matters to analyze, analyze the transient response as well as the, uh, uh, the um, steady state response. So here we are looking at this system, such a system, as a system point of view. So I'm just imagining there is a black box on top of everything. And my input to this system is going to be the weight that I'm going to add. Another thing that matters when we are looking at response of system is how we are adding that input. And um, the way that we are adding it and um, and also the behavior of the system or if you're passing a signal to that what kind of signal is that so in this case um, it matters I'm, I'm putting the weight gradually or i'm putting the weight all of a sudden so the the previous one that i explained this one is by assumption that the weight is added all of a sudden so I'm putting the weight, I'm putting, hanging the mass up there, and I'm letting it go. So I'm not holding my hand, and I'm not compressing it manually or stretching it manually. I'm not doing anything like that. So there is no gradual, um, you know, weight added, nothing. Just all of a sudden, a weight is hanging from that spring. But it matters. In many cases, we are looking at how... Um, if I'm looking at the weight, if I'm looking at voltage, if I'm looking at the current, how that one is behaving, uh, what kind of shape that one has before I'm passing it to system. And then uh, according to what I'm passing to that system, I can expect from, uh, some sort of behavior from that system. In this spring example, the displacement is uh, the output of my system. And you can see that here we have W of T and D of T. So it matters uh, to put T over there to indicate that we are looking at everything in time dimension. What do I mean by time? This plot that I have here, that is representing time. So it matters that I'm looking at the displacement at this time here, which has very high rate of change or I'm looking at that displacement at this point which has a steady state value and I don't see that much change so time is very important we are going to look at time further uh, in this chapter now uh, here it says it is a model describing behavior of control system or control system element respect to time this is also uh, a description for differential equation. So here we are looking at differential equation from another perspective. And in many cases, we are looking at um, derivatives. And you are familiar with derivatives by now, 
previous chapters. So we have first derivative and second derivative here as example. And as you can see, we are looking at derivatives in respect to time. So rate of change of displacement respect to time can be assumed to be uh, d of x over d of t. And then rate of change of that, you are all familiar with this term, that is called second derivative of x over time. So it, it matters that how we are looking at a system, we are considering only uh, one constant, one variable, or we are looking at that over what time or what behavior we are giving to the system and what behavior we are expecting from the system. Now, um, here we are looking at um, kind of a concept. Uh, we are calling it order. So we are categorizing systems based on how they are behaving and uh, what kind of derivative is associated with them. So um, if you look at differential equations, uh, they are describing behavior of control system. And we know that they include derivatives in respect to time. Now, if a derivative that is associated with the system is dx over dt, that is rate of uh, which x varies with time and if derivative uh, d2x over time is considered that is uh, stating how dx over dt is varying with time we are familiar with these terms and here we are looking at um, a higher orders of uh, derivatives and how they are associated with each uh, system so if we have a system and um, the way that it, things are moving, things are changing, are being measured with dx over dt, we are going to call it first order. And if we are uh, looking at the system uh, in such a way that we are concerned about the second order, d2x over dt, dt2, so we are looking at second order system. And furthermore, we can assume that if we have a third order derivative in respect to time, we are looking at third order and so on. So if we have nth order system, we are dealing with nth order derivative in respect to time. So this part is important. Um, we are going to stick to the, the, to the first order and second order. But it is important to know that, you know, it is possible to have higher order systems as well. Now, in this system, we are looking at um, this container or a tank. And it has a floating part. This floating part, you may have seen that in many containers or uh, um, even uh, the flush has a system very similar to this that is displayed here. The handle attached to this floating port, floating part is connected to a part that can block the tap. So if we imagine that this orange part is a tap that is um, pouring the water inside this container, and then uh, this blue part that uh, looks like L, so this L-shaped handle uh, is connected to this a circle shape that is a floating part. Why do I call it floating? Because that will stay on top of the water all the time. No matter how much water is inside, that will stay on top of the water. It's not going to drain down. So that, um, when it is very low down, the floating part, when we have very small amount of water or we have no water, that will be very low here at this stage. And then the handle will go and uh, the L shape will kind of be in this position here. That means that the, the, the tap, this um, part, is open for the water to come. And then as the water is accumulating here, is moving up, we have more and more water, the floating part also moves up, and that kind of um, makes the L shape to go further and further close to this opening here. And um, that will make the, uh, that will fight with the flow of the water. 
and uh, the water will uh, flow uh, less and less. Uh, once the floating uh, circle comes all the way up to some point, here we are imagining the maximum point will be capital H, but uh, up to a certain point the, uh, that uh, the system is designed to, to have that capacity, so the floating part will come up, and then the L shape will cover the opening of that. We'll cover it completely in a way that no water can come. And that can, um, in a very nice mechanical way, control the, the flow of the water and how much water is in the container. So the content of this uh, tank or whatever it is uh, can be controlled with such a system. So we want to look at this system and we see um, how we can analyze it and uh, what order system is this. Is it first order system? Is it second order system or what? Now, if we uh, look at this, um, these variables that I have here, so I'm defining uh, a capital H and that would be like uh, my desired uh, highest maximum level of the water that I want uh, this container to have. And then I have a small h. The small h is the one that is changing. And uh, it might be zero. It might be um, a quarter of h, half of h, 90% um, of h. And it can be equal to h if this water gets to that point. So if I'm just closing my eyes, putting uh, a big black box on top of everything, what would be the input of such a system? The input of this system, will I have water coming and going. So that would be another kind of uh, looking from the system. Um, uh, then I would say, okay, my tank has um, a tap coming to this system or water going uh, out of the system. Um, okay, I continue in a, another uh, recording. Uh, I should put my daughter's ice cream in the fridge, sorry for that. Okay.